Ladies and gentlemen, it is player profile time. Here we are, nearly at the end, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you hear that Raul has now got the scoring record for Real Madrid? 309 yes. goals. So Great right. goal as well, the one that, uh, that sealed it for him. I don't know if any of you saw it. it was oh, it was crisp. a lovely little goal. Was it against Finish. Gijon? Uh, it was. Yeah. 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 That's right. It. But whose record did he break? Alfredo De Stefano. Well, some call him the greatest player of all time, the most complete player of all time. Well, here he is. <laughs> He's only turning up in the Ramble Hall of Fame. De Stefano. Yeah, Alfredo De Stefano. In you come. In, not you, yet, in, not your, yet. in your face. Yeah. You're hovering yeah. the doorway exactly, for a bit yeah. and then we'll you in. <laughs> you're, in the, Although, you're, in, you're in the lushly carpeted, well-furnished waiting lounge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the lobby. Um, but, but if you will, uh, his nickname... The Blonde Arrow. Oh, nice. nice. <laughs> I'll be happy with that. That was me because I'm blonde and all. Yeah, but they, <laughs> I'm blonde and all. <laughs> arrows have no hair on them. Well, it's, it's a good confusing. point. Confusing. We'll let it go for this. It's just Stefano. We'll let him have it. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about the greatest player of all time here, Peter. Yeah. He was born on July the fourth, nineteen twenty-six, Independence Day. He's still alive, isn't he? He's still alive. Yeah. You know, July the fourth. Oh, Jimbo, he's won the sperm race again. Yeah, he's a winner. They're yeah. all winners in the Dean Windass Hall of Fame. They all won that sperm race. They yeah. kicked the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. He was born in Buenos Aires in Argentina. Uh, Argentina? That's yeah. near Argentina. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's right. And and so that's where life began for Alfredo Di Stefano, the blonde arrow. Um, <laughs> at twelve, he joined a youth team called Los Cardales and. Later, he won the amateur championship for them. While 15 years old, he joined the famous River Plate side of the 40s, and he was in their second team at the age of 15. At the age of 16, he had earned himself a place in their first team squad. That's a magnificent... Magnificent mm. stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, well done. River Plate, that was a very famous River Plate side in the 40s, and heralded as one of the great Argentinian sides. For River Plate... In 65 appearances, he scored 49 goals. And this is at the age of like 16 or whatever. Well, no, but he he began to get into the to the yeah. first team at the age of 16, yeah. and then obviously went on. Um, he won the Argentine Championship with them in 1947, and they averaged three goals per match with Di Stefano um, getting a third of those goals. He won, and in 1947, he was top scorer with 27 goals in 30 games. Wow. Awesome, awesome stuff. Absolutely. Where did the arrow himself to next? <laughs> See what you've done there. In 1940... Where did the bow of professional football fire him to next? <laughs> <laughs> so at the age of 16, he'd earned himself a place in the River Plate first team. However, they loaned him out to... I'm going to have a go here. Hurricane. Hurricane. Hurricane, Hurricane um, side. They loaned him out there. He played 25 games for them and scored 10 goals. He then came back to River Plate. In 1947 was a great year for <laughs> River Plate. They won the, uh, the Argentine Championship. They averaged three goals per game, and he scored a third of them. He yeah. scored 27 goals in 30 games. A magnificent achievement, mm, I think yeah. you'll agree, John. At the Jones. age of, like, 17 or something. You know? He was very young at the time. Yeah. Uh, in 1949, many of Argentina's top players moved to uh, Colombia in their uh, so-called Pirate League. It was outside of FIFA's jurisdiction, <laughs> so no transfer fees were paid, thus the, the, the clubs could afford to pay a higher fee. Because at the time, Argentina, um, they went on strike there. Yeah. So they had, to, they had to move abroad. So he's gone all the way up there to um, Milonarios. And oh, they were a famous side. They were a very famous yeah. side at the time. And in 292 appearances for them, he scored 267 goals. <laughs> Good lad. Yeah. Football was a lot more attacking back then. We do say yeah, it every yeah. time, but you still got yeah, to play, like teams would play with like five up front, wouldn't they? You yeah. don't get that. You still got to so, put it in the net, though, Jim, oh, don't yeah, you? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so that obviously um, that caught the eye. Funnily enough, um, in 1953, he'd established himself as the best player in South America at the time. And the Millonarios went for a pre-season tour or a tournament in Spain, and they played. Um, a lot of the Spanish sides, including Real Madrid, yeah. and they won the tournament. And this um, attracted a lot of attention from the Spanish teams. And a certain Santiago Bernabeu, who was the president at the time of Madrid, yeah. made inquiries. He's got a name like a place. He yeah. does a stadium, you might even yeah. say. And he was like, "We're having, We're having some of that. We're having some of that, yeah. indeed." And. Uh, <laughs> Blonde Arrow, come and stay in my quiver. <laughs> <laughs> was maybe what he may have said. That's right. There was a bit of controversy around the transfer to Real Madrid because apparently Barcelona had got him and then they hadn't and mm. one thing or another. But the point is, he ended up at Madrid and for a fee of around about $70,000. Wasn't it 
didn't it come to an agreement at the end where Real Madrid he was going to be in Spain for four seasons and he was going to play a year off and on for Madrid and Barcelona? Well, and Barcelona was like, nah, nah, sod that. I think there was, well, oh, really? once again, yeah. there was a lot of controversy, yeah. and I think... Can you imagine that, that happening? I know, this is crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. He, so he became an official player of Real Madrid. So the, the day after, um, he played in a Spanish league uh, match, which happened to be Real Madrid versus Barcelona. Oh, really? And Real won 5 nil, and uh, De Stefano scored 4 <laughs> so he was, and obviously he was one, a big part of the um, the devastating Real side that won about yeah. forty eight European cups. Well, yeah. I think it was they won 49. five Euro- they won five European cups. They but did, yeah. To be fair, there were only like four four teams. Well, in he, he, the, he game the, know, the game I know well, most yeah. is, is the um, the Eintracht Frankfurt. Frankfurt well, where they well, won well, tough three. Yeah. He uh, he, he had a he had a great partnership with French Pushkas, who's also another one of the good yeah. times. Raymond players. Raymond Copper was in one of those sides as well. It's only a matter of time before Frank Pushkas gets a little uh, absolutely gets a little call mm. up. Isn't it? But he so did the, have the highest tally. The DWHOF, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did. He scored forty nine goals in fifty eight matches in Europe, and that was only surpassed by Roll in two thousand and five. And then uh, Shevchenko, and then uh, Ruvay in 2006. But as you said, it's the weird. highlights. So I just wanted to say, if, yeah. if you were like a footballer, like and you loved football, like, like we all do, and you were lucky enough to become a professional footballer, and you started breaking these records, I'd almost feel a little bit guilty that <laughs> I'd taken the record away from like an amazing player. Because it's always you, you, the way you remember these players, like De Stefano and Puskas, is because of the records they set. And once they yeah. get those records beaten, it's a little bit of a shame, isn't yeah. it? You know what I mean? It's like that. That's gone. No. Yeah, you, you've t- taken away from it. Because yeah. I remember re- reading about, um, I think it was like Linford Christie who said, uh, they said, would you rather have a world record or would you rather have a, a gold medal? He said, I'll have a gold medal because you can never get it taken away from it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit like that. That's why I suppose they want to win titles all the time. Absolutely, like absolutely. And you, you, you expect the greats to stay there as examples for other, but if you remove that record, obviously you're putting yourself up there, but say if Pushkas lost those records, future yeah. generations wouldn't hear about him. Exactly, and, 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 his, and his memory wouldn't be as prevalent, which is a shame. Mm. No, you, uh, I'll tell you. Obviously, taking nothing away from Rao, he's a fantastic goal scorer. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, you said that perhaps a highlight of of his time there was the seven three victory in, over Eintracht Frankfurt in the nineteen sixty European Cup final at yeah. Hampden Park. That's right. Yeah, mm. and uh, I, I, we, I, many I, consider it to be like the finest exhibition of, of defensive football of, ever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was. It really is quite something. I've How seen to the... make a European Cup final sound like a Sunday Park game? Seven three. Yeah, seven <laughs> three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they won five European Cups off the bat: fifty six, fifty seven, fifty eight, fifty nine, and sixty. And sixty. Um, in sixty four, they reached the European Cup final again, but they were beaten three one by Inter, and that was uh, his last major game for Real. And then he moved to Espanyol and scored nineteen goals in two seasons for them. Was he knocking on by then, then, was he? He was knocking on by then. In 1966, he had to retire um, through a back injury at the age of 40. Oh. Still going strong. So, robbed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maldini's like, what? <laughs> but his style <laughs> of play... <laughs> it's in, it, we, must, we must say his style of play, he's, he's obviously a forward. He was all over the place. But he was all over the place. Pace, power, stamina, vision. Uh, he's just reading of the game. You know, he was an artiste. Mm. You know, and... Uh, his versatility. I mean, Bobby Charlton watched him once, and Bobby Charlton commented, he was like, "Who is this guy? He takes the ball from the goalkeeper, yeah, and just and it, it just happens, yeah. yeah. You know, he just he just weaves, he just paints a picture. You know, he, he, I don't think, you know, we talk about um, other great players who are wingers or forwards, who are great goal scorers or playmakers and all this. This guy is just a whole. It's almost as if he was on his own doing it. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. It really was absolutely incredible. There would be never a player like him, and. That is why he's the most complete player of all time. He he played football for Argentina, Colombia, and Spain. And Spain. Yeah. Well, I was going to move on to his international say, career. Yeah. yeah, but he, this guy was just he could play. I mean, talk about total football. He was doing it himself, pretty yeah. much. Mm. Yeah, you know, absolutely magnificent player. But yeah, you're right, people. Talk about his international career. He played for Argentina, living in Argentina. He only played six games for them, but he scored six goals. <laughs> um, and he won uh, a Copa America with them, yeah. oh. South American Championship. <laughs> six games to get in a Copa America, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and he, when he moved to Colombia, um, he played four times for Colombia. It wasn't recognised by FIFA, and it was a little bit different back then, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. he turned out for them. He didn't score for the Colombians, though, but then um, when he moved to Spain, he got Spanish citizenship, and he oh, okay. played 31 times for Spain and scored 23 goals. Sadly, he never played in a World Cup. Um, Argentina refused to participate in the 1950 World Cup, and then Argentina didn't enter the 54 World Cup, so he, he couldn't play for Argentina. They, they've let him down there. They have let him down. It's yeah. his. Uh, it's their fault. Yeah. And and then in, in the the one that he was 
the in Spain they failed to qualify for 50 out, and then in 62 um, he had an injury which prevented him from playing, which was a real shame. Gutting, real. Yeah. After playing, he um, he moved into coaching and he coached he managed the whole, Real, didn't he? Whole host of teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he managed Real, Real twice, I think. Valencia, Boca, River Plate, um, he won Lisbon. The title with Boca, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Oh, he, he did loads of things. Didn't yeah. he? and he's a life president of Real. I'm right in saying that's that, right. Yeah. yeah. He didn't really take any years off either, did he? There was only like a couple of years where he wasn't managing up until like the nineties. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he finished around in ninety one. He's now eighty two years old. He's still knocking around though, Pete. Mm. He's still he's still always welcome. He was kidnapped, <laughs> wasn't he? At one stage, he was. Ki- he was. But he was released. It wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, after it wasn't about just... three days. What was that? Invent- apparently, they treated him really, really well. Was that in Ven- <laughs> yeah. We don't want to do this. Yeah, yeah, Venezuela. Yeah, yeah. He was a, a tour of uh, Venezuela. Is rebels or something like that. They kidnapped him for a few days and then they let him go. I don't know what their demands were. They just wanted to meet him and have a bit. Wanted, yeah. <laughs> wanted to go and knock out Wem, didn't they? <laughs> Maradona had this to say about the. Should we end on a quote from Maradona? Well, I've got a couple. Should of Should we end every show on a quote from Maradona? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maradona. Maradona said, "I don't know if I was a better player than Pele, but I can say without doubt that Di Stefano was better than Pele. I am proud when one speaks of Di Stefano. I can say." That Maradona could be worse than Pele, but I emphasize De Stefano was better. He's just, <laughs> he's just right fucking Pele. tying us up in knots. <laughs> isn't he? He's letting the tortoise get away there, Jim. He is letting doing. the tortoise get away. He should give the dog its, it's face, face back. back. Yeah. It, it should do. Um, but De Stefano himself says a, so- uh, a soccer game without goals, because obviously he scored an absolute hat for us. A, a football match without goals is like an afternoon, afternoon without, without sunshine. sunshine. I remember that. Yeah, yeah it's lovely, isn't it? But, but if I end with uh, with him, he's quoting saying, the ball gave me prestige, gave me fame, gave me riches. Thank you, my old friend. Because of the ball, I have a wonderful family and a son that plays football. Ah, oh. Alfred is definitely. Get him in. Alfredo. Yeah. He's gonna make that he's gonna make the Dean Wendas Hall of Fame really tick. Just yeah. give him all sorts of credit. They're gonna have to pull their socks up. Yeah, we can't especially Dean Windass and Dion Dublin. They're gonna struggle <laughs> to get in that side. Now. I like to think when De Stefano walks in, they're all gonna sort of straighten their backs and do their ties up a bit yeah. straight and say, Oh, the, mm. the blonde arrow's here. <laughs> <laughs> and he always hits his target. <laughs> Sorry to cheapen the great man and the great footballer with a series of ill-judged puns. That's fine. 